It's family hour. There must be something on. Oh, wow! Candy critters! Oh! Oh, great! It's Monsters, our favorite show. Shh. It's starting. That's right, Buffalo. It's just a little past 3 o'clock in the morning, and you're here on the Ray Bright Show. It's the witching hour in Buffalo. That is if you believe in witches. It's that time when the psychotics, the time travelers, the people who believe in the beyond, start to sneak out of their dank and smelly sewers looking for a little bit of attention. I'm Ray Bright, kind of your consumer advocate in the land of the supernatural, and for the last hour, We've been seated with one Cassandra Lefkowitz, a lady who claims, and I underline the word claims, to be able to predict the future. Hello, Ray. It's nice to share this space with you. <laughs> I'm sure it is, Cassandra. There's nothing like a little free publicity, is there? Now, we've been here for more than an hour. And in that hour, we've heard all about your astral projections, your harmonic convergences, your visions of the apocalypse. Let's get real. How about the point spread of the Bills game tomorrow night? Ray, as I've explained, I'm not allowed to use my talents for monetary gain. Right. Right. Then perhaps you could explain to all of us, Cassandra, why your new book, Into the Future, sells for... $26. I'm not here to promote the book, Ray. That's a good call. Because right here on page 63, you predict that the Golden Gate Bridge is going to collapse into the Atlantic Ocean. Now, how does that happen? Is that transcontinental transference? It was a typo, Ray. It was one of those silly mistakes, a silly typo. Miss <laughs> Cassandra, I'll give you a typo. Give me a prediction. The Oscars. Uh, the, the, the Dow Jones averages, the, the, the football game. I've got it. Maybe you'd like to predict tomorrow morning's rush hour traffic on the expressway. Now, that might be a little risky. Ray, don't you understand? I've been sent here to save you. <laughs> hey, Deb, did you hear that? She's been sent here to save me. Oh, Ray's going to be saved. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, live in our studio, the Mother Teresa of the Twilight Zone. Ray, each one of us has only one specific talent. And mine is that I can see when horrible things are going to happen to people. Oh, well, that's really great. I mean, here I am buried in downtown Buffalo doing an all-night radio gig, and I'm interviewing zombies that bark at the furniture, and you say things are going to get worse? Sure you don't want to take a shot at traffic? I have a premonition, Ray. I see you confined in a small, dark space with lots of chrome, moaning and writhing and turning and... Hold on a second. Now, you cute little thing, have you been sneaking into my apartment while I haven't been there? Is this all about sex? Is that what it's about? Hey, Buffalo, I swear to you, this chick has never been inside my bedroom, not in your wildest dreams of the future would that ever happen. You can joke, Ray. But I'm warning you, if you don't change, a terrible fate awaits you. Okay? Change number one. Poof! You're gone. Hey, Buffalo. I'm Ray Bright. And we'll be back after these commercials and a general hosing down of the walls in here. You can talk Cassie, you were great. They loved you. Ray, I'm not kidding. I'm warning you. Get real, will you? Goodbye. I mean, ciao. Hey, Debbie, who's our next victim? A woman with
with an alien in a box. Uh, that's great. It's my lucky night. Are we still on for breakfast? Of course. That's right, my Buffalo Billies. If you need transportation for going back in time, forward in time, or just around the cosmic block, channel your hide over to George's Used Cars on Delaware Avenue. You tell him Ray Bright sent you, and he'll beat any price in the known universe. And speaking of the known universe, my next guest... My next guest is worth a close encounter of any kind. Good evening, Raymond. I understand you've brought an alien with you. Yes, I did. And it's right here in this box. I love the way you shake that box, Amanda. Buffalo, too bad you can't be in the studio with me tonight. Actually, it's probably better because I get to spend the evening alone with one Amanda Smith-Jones, a lady who's just too beautiful for radio. You're making me blush, Raymond. I love it when you call me Raymond. You okay? Just a little nervous. I was worried. I didn't expect you to be so nice. Hey, babe. I'm a sweetheart. I'm a compassionate guy. I'm a guy who cares about people. Now, why don't you come on over here and sit down and make yourself comfortable? Well, I... Hey, talk to Raymond. Come on. Come on. Well... No need for you to worry about anything. It's just you and me. So why don't you tell me about your close encounter with the alien? It was terrible. Oh, I'm sure it was. Go on. Well, it all started on a beach in Saint-Tropez. What were you wearing? Nothing. There I was. Naked, all alone, when suddenly I had this strange feeling, this sensation and this quivering, and I looked up, and there he was, on top of me. He was on top of you? An alien, standing there. You poor thing. And within seconds, we were traveling upwards through space and time. And it got very, very quiet. I was in a cylindrical room on a white table, and two of them held my arms, and two of them held my feet, and they all took turns examining and probing me. Ray, we have callers. No calls. Go ahead. Anyway, when it was all over, they explained to me that they were from another planet. A place where they had eliminated evil and hypocrisy and hatred. And the solution is right in this box. Babe, what are you telling me a story like this for? What are you talking about? Hey, babe, I hear it all. Sex on Mars, Kennedy, Marilyn, Elvis, all... <laughs> hanging around down at a convenience store having a ham sandwich. What is a handsome woman like you doing in this place at 3.30? feeding me all that mumbo-jumbo. I thought you were going to believe me. Fine. You want a fantasy? I'll give you a fantasy. You and me, we leave here right now by limo. We check in at the Ritz Hotel downtown. We get ourselves the honeymoon suite. And I'll tell you what, instead of silk sheets, I'll give you champagne. Instead of time and space, I'll give you a trip to an astral plane that you've never even thought of being on before. Raymond, I'm very hurt. Fine. I'll take a look inside the box. Be careful. I'm on. 
horrified. I'm shocked. That's right, Buffalo, you can't lose at Madeline's Manicure Mansion. And now a word from Mary's Pizza Palace. Ray, I want to talk to you. When you think of pizza, Don't you go anywhere. You think of the good old days. The time for Okay, what's up? What are you doing to me? What are you talking about? You're embarrassing me. Shh. You're in there trying to pick her up. Hey, you're the producer. I thought I was your girlfriend. Babe. Don't babe me, Ray. You told me. You told me how you screwed up in Los Angeles and Chicago. You told me that I was your last best hope. Gabby, it's you and me together. What goes on in that studio is strictly show business. I am not going to watch you self-destruct. Trust me. Go back into your booth. Trust me. Do it. Do it now. Technical difficulties. I see. And you can always tell when you're doing a great show, you get people really angry. Keep up the good work. Hello, Buffalo. You're back on 1020. And for the benefit of those who just joined us, I'm Ray Bright, and with me is one Amanda Smith-Jones, who was discovered naked on a beach, abducted by aliens, taken to a cylindrical room where she was probed, given a small monster-like uh, creature that was uh, brought back to Earth to eliminate evil in our civilization. Say hello, Buffalo. Hello, Buffalo. And because this is an equal opportunity station, we'll get old Mr. Slug to say a word or two. Save yourself, Ray. There's still time. Oh, please. Please, Amanda, if that is your name, who put you up to this? What are you talking about? My 13-year-old daughter could make a better puppet than that. What'd you do, to go to ventriloquism school? Can the act, baby. What do I look like? I'm kind of a fool. What are you, a member of some suburban witch's coven? No, I'm innocent. No, no, no. I know you're kind. I know why you hate me. You hate me because I have the power. I have the power that's stronger than crystals. I have the power that's stronger than magic. I have a power that's stronger than all that cosmic crap you people spew. I have the power to change people's minds. I'm that little voice that you hear in the dark. And I can do it all from this little room. I'm not sorry for anyone I've destroyed because I tell the truth. Deserve to be destroyed. You're right. People should get what they deserve. So who put you up to this? Nobody. I told you the truth. I was just drawn to you. To your power. I couldn't stay away.
buffalo, she tasted like a cool Georgia peach on a warm summer evening. Now, are you ready to believe me? Now I'm ready to believe anything. The creature comes from a planet, a universe that's a much kinder place than Earth. Kindness is nice. Like Earth, there was a time they were plagued by hate and hypocrisy. But they realized that hate feeds on hate, so they created creatures like this to devour it. Where's the big deal? They just created something else that kills. Yes, but it's more humane. It can only devour a subject who volunteers. No one gets absorbed who isn't willing. Babe, we could be having great sex in some motel room. Instead, I'm sitting here tonight discussing humane death. Hey, Debbie, do you believe this? Terrific. Looks like I'll be going home uh, alone tonight. Anyway, for the benefit of my listeners, do you mind if I ask uh, your friend about all of this? Get it directly from the blob's mouth, so to speak. I'm afraid that wouldn't help. Why not? You see, the creature doesn't have a mind of its own. It simply absorbs the personality of its last meal. And when it eats again, the previous mind is erased. Amanda, it's 3.30 in the morning. Can't you think of something more adult we could be doing with this night? I think your little monster there is a fake. So here's the deal. I take a chance that Mr. Slugball here eats me. If he does, I'm dead. But if he doesn't, it's you and me in the Ritz Hotel honeymoon suite. I can't let you do that. Why not? Didn't you like the kiss? I know you wanted it. No, no, it's not that. I just cannot... Come I... on, pull the beast out of the box. But I... I insist. Hey, Buffalo, as my witness, I'm volunteering. You insist? I insist. Let's get it over with. Well, if you insist. Remember, babe, tonight, you and me at the Ritz. <laughs> you fool! You fool! You fool! That's right. It's a little after four in the morning. And they're all out in force tonight. Your psychopaths, your crazies, your time travelers, your nutsos who believe in the beyond. I'm Big Ben Grady, and this is Dallas Talk Radio. And my next guest. My next guest is worth traveling across an entire universe for one little close encounter. Hello, Benjamin. Honey, you know I love it when you call me Benjamin. So what's in the box? A friend from another planet. Forsooth, love, Lawrence is already making me jealous. So do I get to meet him? Of course. Be a sucker for the babe! She's in! 